Hi, welcome to the Biopharma Finder help videos. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how our new feature in Biopharma Finder 3.0 allows you to export your information from the software, from the peptide mapping workflow, into the Kermelian software for targeted analysis. So on the screen, you'll see the process and review page for the peptide mapping. So in this experiment, I processed a series of raw files that had rituximab protein digested, and it was spiked with different levels of the PRTC standard. And the different levels were 100 femtomol, or no, I'm sorry, 1,000 femtomoles, 750 femtomoles, all the way down to 25 femtomoles. The samples were processed using the peptide mapping workflow, and we were looking for the rituximab peptides and the PRT standards. And so here on the screen, I laid out the screen just a little bit differently so that it would be easier for you to actually see uh, all of these different files. And I'm actually demonstrating, so if you right click in the software, for those of you who might not know how to do this, you can um, select, go to the selected chromatogram tab and it'll allow you to plot one of the different types of plots we have. So in this case, I'm using the selected ion chromatogram for multiple raw files. So we have the seven different files, and you can see the different conditions and the, the different spiked amounts. And by doing this, as you can view the XICs from all the files. So if we click on the table, you can see how it will change for the different peptides. So you can zoom in, and you can see how this differs uh, across the different files. Okay, so the other thing I've done in the main grid in, uh, is I applied a filter. So I did the contains filter. So if you remember, if you click here and go to connect contains, and I just started to type the PRTC. And I was just filtering away the rituximab peptides because those are constant in this uh, spike study. So once you have that, you can go through and um, review the peptides if you want and figure out which ones you'd like to export into Chromelian. And then simply check the check boxes. And then once you've checked the check boxes, go to Export Checked Components and go to Chromelian. Now when it pops this up, it's giving you the option to um, give as the number of isotopes you'd like the software to look for. Uh, so we're going to set it to 4 and then hit OK and it allows you to go in and select where you'd like to save the Chromelian formatted file. So it's a .bpf file. So we're going to save it. And it pops up a little message. Okay, so now we have the file. And now let's go to Chromelian. So I've already brought my raw files into Chromelian. So you have to import your files into Chromelian. And I have the processing method I'd like to use and the layout of my home page. So I've already done all that, and now I'm ready to import in the results into the Chromelian software. Now this is Chromelian 7.2.6, and this version does have the import um, format for the Biopharma Finder software. The older versions will not have that, uh, so you want to make sure you have the correct version. And so I just brought in the same raw files from, from the studies to for this demonstration. So once you're on the MS component table, you can click import. So once you click import, and then you're going to browse. Now here you'll see the Biopharma Finder peptide list. And you just find your um, .bpf file, select it, click open, and it'll refresh and show you the list that, of peptides that you're going to be importing. It'll give you the retention time, charges, the uh, precursor mass, and then in this case we had the four different isotopes. You can exclude things at this point um, if you don't want to import them, if you've mistakenly brought it in. You can uncheck it. So click the import, so it's going to go through. Now at the top we're looking at a trace of um, all of the different confirming ions. So we have our three, four different isotopes, and then we have our quantitation peak. And here you have your grid, and then you have a whole bunch of different plots that we could do over here as well. Now the first thing we want to do is adjust the retention time window that it's actually going to use. Um, and usually you're safe with getting a window of 1. So what I usually do is come in and change this to 1. Click Enter. And then right click and then do Fill Down. So that will adjust the width. Uh, for most of your peaks, and that's that's usually um, a good enough 
width to get started. And so it'll it'll find this time and it'll look around that time. Now you can also adjust this uh, retention time as you feel needed as well. Okay, so let's look at the the different plots that we have over here. So we have an isotopic distribution plot. Uh, just give it one second. There we go. And so when I click on this level, so you'll see that this peptide's in here twice. So you have um, the top one is the sum of all the different charge states. Now in this export we uh, or import, we've only done one charge state. But if you did had multiple uh, charge states, Chameleon's going to pull all that together and it'll show you that information um, in, in one line. And then you can always go and review the individual charge state information. So you want to make sure you click on the number to get it to change. And so when you do this, you'll see um, the bar graph, which shows each one of the raw files. And it also shows the theoretical distribution. So you can just, I'll just click through a few of these and you can see how it will show you the different information. There you go. And it's going to change your grid at the top. Okay. Now if we... Um, also what we can do is right now currently I'm showing you this in the tick and you can do um, the MS quantitation. Now when you're in the MS quantitation it's going to take a little bit of time because it's actually going to do some scoring and it's going to tell you um, whether these are correct or not. So whenever you are playing around and setting up, you know, interacting with the different grids and everything, you want to be in the tick view. Um, and when you're ready, you can go into the MS quantitation view. And once you're there, it'll, uh, it will, um, you'll get a lot more interactiveness. You can also um, get rid of the interactive charts if things are starting to, to slow it down. And you can put that back and on uh, if, if you see that your memory is kind of taking a lot um, on your computer. The newer version of Chameleon is much better for that. Um, but for this demonstration, my, my uh, computer is a little bit slow. So let me go ahead and show you what happens when I do MS quantitation. Um, so it's going to go through and it's going to score. So you can see how it's scoring each one of the peptides. It's just going to move through the list. And it's looking for um, whether or not the, the components match the theoretical information. And so you can see an example down here. For this one, it's not very happy with what we had for that. Let's see if I can actually click on that. There's another nice view that you can do. Um, let me see. Okay, it's still scoring. Let me turn off the interactive charts for a second. Okay. There you go. It's almost finished scoring. Okay, there we go. Now let's click on this one. Okay, let's go back to our tick. Put our interactive charts back on. There we go. So you can see right here in these files, something's not quite right with this one. So we would want to go back and investigate and figure out, okay, what's going on with those files? And are those just the low abundant ones? Yes. So those are the, that's the, um, so the most abundant one is in blue and it's going, so this is the 25 at the mole, I think in the 50 at the mole. So this isotope the second isotope for that peptide is not quite uh, being seen clearly in those files. So you can go back and, and look at it and see how it looks and maybe make some adjustments. Okay, so um, this is just a very brief demonstration of how you can get your information from um, Biopharma Finder now into the Chameleon software. Um, and you can do the targeted analysis. There's one more plot I can show you. Um, let's give it a second to update. And this is a, a component area plot. So you can see the areas and you correspond the numbers here with the numbers over here for your numbers of injections. And so number seven is the largest. So this is uh, 1,000 femtomoles and then it goes down to 25 femtomoles. So then you can see that that's exactly what the spiking uh, was supposed to do for the, the samples of what, that we actually had. And you can go through and click on each of the different peptides and you'll be able to see this, the plots and stuff will update. Okay, well, thank you very much.